Well, hi there. Uh, this is Reverend Joanne, and this is our latest edition of Holy Grounds, where we will um, be talking about this Sunday's scripture reading, the gospel lesson. I have my coffee here, and I'm talking with Georgie Funderburg, who is the newest member of our St. John's staff. Georgie, it's a pleasure to um, spend some time with you. And if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and saying a few words about um, who you are and what you'll be doing at St. John's. I'm so happy to be here with you, Joanne. Um, I am coming to St. John's after being in Baltimore for about seven years. Um, and I am excited to join the team. It's a wonderful, program that, that it's already in um, happening at St. John's. Um, I've been in ministry for about 15 years working with children and youth and adults. And at St. John's, I will be the interim youth director. And I am just so excited about the robust program. Uh, I live in Baltimore City with my, with my family. Um, I have five children who keep me very busy, um, but, but very blessed. Very good. We're, we're so pleased to have you with us. And um, if you would, just um, let's hear the gospel reading for this Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday of Advent. This from the first chapter of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and all will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy. He will be called son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Thank you. Um, it's such a beautiful a passage. Um, all of our Advent passages are just lovely and they evoke a lot of memories. Um, they tend to be pretty familiar to us. We hear them year after year. Um, the, um, the famous passage that follows this one that we just heard, um, many people know from um, the Charlie Brown Christmas story, the famous passage um, that oh, Linus reads um, to help his friends hear what the true meaning of Christmas is. So I think these passages um, have a lot of um, familiarity and are um, dear to our hearts um, because, of, because of that and because of the time of year um, and simply that they evoke um, miracles and they ask us to um, imagine how things that we might believe to be impossible are possible. I hear, um, I hear a lot going on in this passage. So true. Um, um, I think that it so says what exactly something, do you think God is trying to convey to us in this yeah, passage? I think it says something about God. Um, uh, not only that God comes to Mary, who is a young woman or even an adolescent in uh, a remote village, um, uh, who would be an unknown person, 
um, perhaps an unlikely person, um, and that God has also come to her cousin Elizabeth, who in a different way um, is also an unlikely person. Um, both of them um, uh, bearers of, of uh, babies that will come to change the course of the entire world. Um, so I think that um, we can remember too uh, that God comes to us um, even if we feel that we um, aren't uh, important or don't have a particular status. Um, and I think this is a good lesson for children. What I do you think? I a lot about I, I agree. I, I've been thinking a lot about Elizabeth this Advent season and how she's this somebody that we don't hear much about, but she's named um, and she is used in this holy and precious way. Last week's gospel, when we, were, when we were hearing about John as an older man, I was wondering where is Elizabeth in that part of the story? Um, is, she a, is she proud of him? Is she a little embarrassed of him? Um, I wish that we had the rest of that story for her. Um, but thinking of her with this, uh, this new life coming to her and thinking about how she and Mary surely, you know, shared stories and the boys must have grown up together. Um, I think that we can talk with children just about how John and Jesus were just, you know, they were just your regular little boys. They, they played together and they ate together and they messed up together. Um, although Jesus a little bit less, I guess. Um, with children, I think that they are sometimes the biggest believers in miracles. I think as adults, it's harder sometimes to understand miracles. Um, but you know, you tell children that, gosh, anything is possible and they, they just believe you. Um, I mean, we were in this season where we have these magical beings that come into our lives. Um, and sometimes I think that Jesus can feel that same way, this magical being that comes into our life. Um, and I'm, I'm a big fan of playing off of one and using, using one story to tell the other. Um, you know, in our house, Santa is a big deal, but Santa always points to Jesus. Um, that's Santa's reason for being is to to tell us of Christ's birth and to share with us the same way that God shares with us. Right. Well said, and I agree with you about um, the stories always, always are pointing to each other. Um, we can't really read scripture um, in isolation. Um, we can't really simply look at a passage on Sunday um, without looking at what came before and what comes after. Um, to really get the whole story. I'm also struck by um, the story of Elizabeth um, and how um, both of these women um, were so open to this, um, what might be called a holy disruption to their lives. Um, although Elizabeth um, prayed for a child, um, she thought at that certain point in her life that that wasn't possible. And Mary, we don't know if she prayed for this child, um, but wasn't expecting what happened at all. Uh, and yet they said yes. So I wonder how we as grown-ups might um, take a lesson from that and how we might even take a lesson from, from children and young people um, who, as you said, tend to be more open um, and are less maybe conditioned to, um, to doubt or to question things that seem not logical. I think that's part of our, you know, it's part of our Western mindset um, to want to know the logic and the reason behind things. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So there's certainly mystery in our faith. There certainly is a lot of mystery in our faith. Um, that is that is part of the beauty of it, and that really I think is um, when you come down to it. Without mystery, what is it? Um, uh, it would be perhaps um, simply doctrine um, or rules. Um, but I think especially at this time of year, um, to be open to the mystery and the wonder. Um, wonder is a beautiful thing. It's, it's really easy to, to believe what you can see and, um, you know, having faith in something that you can't quite hold um, is a really remarkable thing. That's right. And um, we know that Mary pondered things in her heart. And although she was perplexed mm -hmm. and maybe surprised and maybe a little frightened, um, she, she kind of put herself right into it. Um, uh, she pondered what kind of a greeting the angel was bringing. Um, she held things in her heart. Um, she asked the question, how can this be? Um, but in contrast, in the Elizabeth story, when Zechariah was visited by the angel, he wanted to know the facts. Um, how can I know that this is true? Um, so they're very different responses. And um, I think if we look at those different responses, we might be able to learn something about ourselves too. I think it's definitely a time right. of year to to be open and looking for those miracles. I, I think maybe one of the great blessings of 2020 when we look back on it is that so many of us are more open now because we have had to learn to be more open, you know, not knowing what next week will bring and what will be open next week and when we'll go back to school and all the waiting and wonderings. Um, I think have left many of many of us more open. And I hope that that can translate to our faith, being more open with what God might be calling us to do. Yes, and the waiting. Um, mm. That is the hallmark of our Advent season. Um, and we've all been put in this place of a long extended period of waiting with, with a lot of uncertainty. Um, so now that we come to the end of this year of 2020, um, and the horizon looks a little bit brighter these days with certain changes that have happened and developments in the pandemic. Um, that um, let's hope and pray that we um, are indeed on, on the cusp of uh, something new and some, some new thing that we are all about to birth and that we are creating together. Well, thank you so much for this time together. Without a doubt. I hope um, I've enjoyed talking about this passage with you. I've enjoyed it. So uh, I hope that you have a, a good rest a of one. Advent. It's a beautiful passage. Um, I look forward to seeing you, Georgie, and I look forward to seeing um, as many people as are able to come to Walking to Bethlehem on Sunday, the 20th at five o'clock. We hope that. Um, the snow will not be falling from the sky, but it might still be making our campus beautiful. And uh, we look forward to that opportunity um, to be together from a distance to prepare for the birth of Jesus. Thank you again. God's blessing on you. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Wonderful. Bye-bye.